Hi, so um, I just wanted to show you this nice plant. Kind of really uh, got interested in this one of maybe last year. Or I've always been interested in this one for the last decade or so, but uh, you know, one thing I realized last year when I was hunting goldenrods is that we have quite a variety of them. Uh, about 14, 15, maybe even 18 species in the New York City area. And this one, this one's the blue stem uh, goldenrod. And, you know, the the, spe the name you should really remember is um, Solidago cesia. Cesia meaning blue. And, and it's got axillary flowers. It's... Um, it grows on the forest floor, away from too much sunlight. And these are a little bit past flower. I mean, all golden rods are in, are in the uh, Asteraceae plate. Right, let's see if I can... There you go. Look at that. Alright, so these are a bit past flower. Maybe look more like this. This one here. Okay. <clears throat> oh, dentate leaves, but otherwise smooth glaucus. Yeah. Smooth glaucus and it's a real beauty when there's lots of it growing around. I mean right here it's surrounded by poison ivy and we got some hickories. I need to key out the hickories if I want to do the hickories, but basically they're they have alternate leaf arrangement or sub-opposite. Yeah, they got alternate leaf arrangement to sub-opposite. There you go. Look at those buds. Yeah. Right. And then the leaf scars kind of look like a, a camel face. I guess you can imagine that it looks like the face of a camel. So... Just a few feet away from the, uh, our native blue stem goldenrod, we have this invasive tree, which is a maple, as you can see from the leaves. All right, look at these sharp sinuses there, there. Okay, look at that sharp sinus, V-shaped sinuses. Uh, but what really gives it away sometimes is if you take a leaf stem, get really close you see that white little dot well these guys are kind of dry now but this plant exudes a white milky latex from the base of the leaf uh, this one's gonna do it this one look at that you see that and this is the Acer Platinoides Norway Maple. Yeah. So it's got a distinctive leaf shape. Platinoides, like almost like the uh, like the sycamore, right? So there's uh, that one that I was showing you. This one. That's another one. Down there is about three, four, five more. There's a big one over there. So it can quickly cover an area 
that would have been native forest uh, with its own species, and it becomes a dominant tree very quickly. I mean, this is this is the mother tree right now, and it's every fall releases the samaras, and the samaras grow. And instead of having nice beech trees like this, we end up having a whole bunch of these Norway maples. So here again is the Solidego cesia. It's, oh, it's short. It's not too big. A relatively small plant. Really nice flowers. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Some kind of leaf miner working on this plant. Oh, look at all those pollinators. So I was walking a little bit and I found myself in another opportunity to show you guys yet another invasive. Probably shown it in another video. But notice these reddish berries. That's actually the berries. To, this is the... Oh, I lost that. I guess here's the... Uh, the fruit unopened, then there's the red arrow, an arrow which is just a, a growth that comes around the fruit, and underneath this red arrow is the actual one seeded fruit. See that? Anyway, and you got these corky ridges extend down. Look at this. You see that? Okay. This is burning bush, you want a miscellata. Invasive, non-native. Yeah, look at all these blue stem golden rods. Isn't that beautiful? Over there. It's a really a dominant species on the forest floor. Look at this. Oh. We got a bumblebee visiting one. Hey, look at this. And there's the road. All these are blue stem golden ones. And there's another one that's similar to this, but it's got white flowers with the yellow anthers and the yellow uh, stigma sticking out of the anthers. You know, because the anthers form a, like a tube and the uh, style pokes out and the stigma, you see the bilobe stigma coming out on the other end. But anyway, those would be yellow and in this other species, Solidago bicolor, uh, bi bicolor, bicolor. Right, it's got the yellow reproductive parts and the white corolla, the white petal corolla. So over here is another Euonymus, but this is a native Euonymus. And there aren't too many of those. If we take a look, you can see it from a distance with those red fruit. Wow. Look at this. Isn't that beauty? We got like a purple violet fruit capsule and then just like the other one you have the arrows isn't that a beauty the american strawberry bush you know it's got these seeds it's surrounded by an arrow which is a growth that occurs around the seeds here and it tracks birds and inside you have the 
the, the seeds. Yeah, oh, lost that one. Everybody should have one of these bushes in their gardens. It's 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 a beauty. Sorry about that. Got interrupted. But anyway, yeah, look at this. Wow. So, common name, it kind of looks like a strawberry, right? Common name is the American strawberry bush. Let's see if we can get a nice close up of this. Look at the look at the structure on the fruit capsule. A little bit spiky. Here's so I got rid of the arrow. Yeah, disperse a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? See, this is what people should have planted instead of the uh, the burning bush that you want to later that I showed you before. Which is why it's invasive now, because people planted it in their gardens. Because it turns a nice orange to bright red in the fall. But this guy is a nice upright bush. Uh, it's a short tree, actually. I wouldn't call it a bush. It's got opposite leaves. Like Euonymus, fruit structure is very similar, but it's prettier, so much prettier. And I don't know if this guy turns colors in the fall, but probably does, as most of our f flora does around here. Let's see, here's a fruit capsule without the seeds. A bird to pick at this short, why not? And here's, here's one that still has the fruit on it. And that orange stuff is the arrow. So amongst this sea, or little lake of green stuff, which we call Rosa Multiflora, one of our worst invasives, is at the edge a small tree which is a southern native and this is a magnolia grandiflora with the big white flowers and let's see if i can get over there without tearing up my pants too much i'll find a way but there's another reason i want to go over there and i want to show you another member of the celestracee two of which were the american strawberry bush and the uh, burning bush. Right, let's see if I can get to it. So this is Magnolia grandiflora, which has got big white flowers. And it's more of a southern tree, an Appalachian tree. Southern Appalachians is what I mean. And, you know, it shouldn't really survive here, but it's been doing well over the last 10 years. Hashtag climate change. Uh, and you know it, I don't know if it's spreading though probably well, it's got a little a little sapling there but probably from uh, from the roots okay I, I, yeah I'm sure it was planted but the point is it hasn't died nobody's protecting it in the winter time the New, York, the New York Botanical Garden has a big specimen there, but, you know, they have people taking care of it. Where is that other plant? Oh, okay, so take a look at this. This leaf here. Okay. Some kinglets, golden crown kinglets. Okay, well, take a look at this leaf This with this teardrop shape okay this is a vine an invasive vine see any similarities with the other ones it's a fruit capsule and an arrow 
and the seeds are inside. Small, in this case, small seeds. This is Celastrus orbiculatus. Celastrus orbiculatus. I forget the common name. Asian bittersweet or something. Yeah. And, you know, it attracts birds, sure. What, what with an arrow wouldn't attract birds? And that's one of the reasons it spreads so easily, because birds come, they eat the seeds. They don't get much nutrition out of it, though. So they have to eat more of it than they would from, say, a strawberry bush. The American strawberry bush. But they do what they can, and they end up pooping out the seeds all over the place, and it covers... It covers the, uh, the ground floor, it covers the short bushes, the small bushes, and, and whatever, it smothers out whatever's growing underneath. Just like any decent invasive would do. You know, you know, like this, there's nothing else here. Look at this. All this is uh, Rosa Multiflora, there's nothing else here. There should be blue stem golden rods and jack in the pulpits and um, white wood asters and things like that but there aren't and who knows I mean I, I grew up in a period of time when there was basically this is all there was so I, I don't even have a full account in my head of all the things that should be here because I've never seen it before isn't that sad? yeah it's sad alright well you, that's the thing if you don't know what was here you can't miss it you can't feel sorry for something that's gone if you never knew it existed in the first place. So I guess that's the point of these videos, right? Show you what there is and what there isn't. And hopefully people will wise up and try to conserve our natural areas. Up there is a, a big tree, I don't know. Yeah, you can't tell from here, but it's it's Polonia tomentosa, which is a uh, called the princess tree. Let's take a look at this guy again. You see, look at those. Look at those berries. So I wanted to show you a close up of that fruit morphology. You got the seeds surrounded by the arrow, and inside. There you go, they're inside, there are the seeds.